Hello, I'm Pastor Tenney. Welcome to our midweek Lenten service. I'm glad that you are with us. If you'd like to join us today in Holy Communion, you could join us wherever you are by getting a special plate and some bread and a special chalice or a cup or a glass and some wine. Or if you'd like to remember your baptism, you may get a special bowl of water so that you might dip your finger in it and remind yourself at the appropriate time of your baptism and your calling. Or you can drive through if you're watching live and participating with us that way. Right after this service, I'll be available for about 45 minutes here at the church at Christ Concord. Please feel welcome to drive up and join us for Holy Communion. Well, this week we are in the final days of our Lenten journey. As we journey from Palm Sunday to the cross, we've been walking together every Wednesday throughout this Lenten journey and this tension between the now and the not yet in the messy middle of our lives. Jesus' journey this week, it's, boy, it's a difficult journey. It's a challenging week for us to witness and an even harder week for Jesus to endure. And for Jesus, the worst is yet to come. This whole Jesus thing is an amazing story. It's an amazing story about all that God does to take away our sins and the sins of the whole world and to make us whole, to restore our relationship with God. Boy, if we, could, if we could really grasp the fullness of what Jesus does for us in this final week of his life on earth, you know, how could we possibly focus on anything else? How could we focus 
on ourselves, given all that Jesus has done. You know, Jesus' journey to the cross is an amazing story. It's a story that doesn't require an advanced degree to understand, although hundreds of thousands of books have been written about it, and many theologians have pontificated on it over the centuries, and many debates have taken place about what Jesus dying on the cross really means. It's a story that begs to be told over and over and over, simply, clearly. I had a seminary professor who said, don't use 50 cent words when nickel words will work. He said, you don't need to try to impress anyone with your knowledge and clever wit, just tell the story. In Paul's first letter to the church that he formed in Corinth, he states the same thing. You know, Paul can often get wordy in his writing, but here he reminds us what is most important about our faith. Simply and clearly, he tells us what our thoughts should be about and where our thoughts should be directed. From 1 Corinthians chapter 2. When I first came to you, dear brothers and sisters, I didn't use lofty words and impressive wisdom to tell you God's secret plan. For I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified. Let me read that last sentence again. For I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified. I came to you in weakness, timid and trembling, and my message and my preaching were very plain. Rather than using clever and persuasive speeches, I relied only on the power of the Holy Spirit. I did this so you would trust not in human wisdom, but in the power of God. You know, I think Paul is saying it's not all about me. It's not all about us. It's all about Jesus Christ and what God has done for us through him. Do you know anyone who can't wait to talk about him or herself? It's like when a small group is gathered and someone else is sharing a story, it doesn't take long before these people interject something and the conversation circles back to them as, as if it's a competition. Ever play the one-up game? Well, these people play it and probably don't even realize that they're playing it. Whenever someone else shares, they, they have a story to top it, to one-up anyone else's story, all, all to see who has the bigger story, who is the most popular, who is the greatest, and if we're honest with ourselves, it's not just the other people who play that game. I've played that one-up game, and I bet you have too. But guess what? So have the disciples. They're reclining around a table, and they've just finished the Passover meal with Jesus, and, and then Jesus gives them the bread and the wine, telling them to take, to eat, to drink. This is my body given for you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, and there's not a, a wow that's offered around the table, not a thank you, Jesus, or I can't believe, I can't believe you're doing this for me. None of those were uttered. Instead, instead, they do this in Luke chapter 22. Then they began to argue among themselves about who would be the greatest among them. Jesus told them, in this world the kings and great men lord it over their people, yet they are called friends of the people. But among you it will be different. Those who are the greatest among you should take the lowest rank, and the leader should be like a ser servant. Who is more important, the one who sits at the table or the one who serves? The one who sits at the table, of course, but not, but not here. For I am among you as one who serves. You have stayed with me in my time of trial, and just as my Father has granted me a kingdom, I now grant you the right to eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And you will sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. This work, this ministry, this life, Jesus says, is not about one-upping. 
It's not about who is the greatest, who has the bigger story, who has the greater position, who has more money, who has the more magnetic personality, who has the more attractive appearance, who has the biggest number of Instagram followers. He says, no, not here, not here. Because he says, you, you are different. For I am among you as one who serves. Jesus says, now go. Now go and do likewise. Amen. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you have established your rule in the human heart through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. In your mercy, enable us to share in his servant nature, in his obedience to your will, and in the glorious victory of his resurrection. We pray this through the one who lives and who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. If you're joining us in Holy Communion, take a moment to get some bread and some wine and maybe in a special chalice or cup so that you might share with us wherever you are as we bless these elements together. Hear these words. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples after he broke it, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people. For the forgiveness of sin, do this in remembrance of me. Let us join together now as we say our Lord's Prayer, as Jesus teaches us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We take the bread and we eat. This is my body given for you. We take the cup and drink. This is my blood shed for you. My friends, may you be strengthened and kept in his grace, now and always. Amen. Thank you.